I hope you're having a great day. <clears throat> Today I want to talk about moving from stress to de-stress. Stress, as we know, is never the problem. Everyone watching this video today has stress in their life, in some way or the other. There's no one who can really say they don't have stress. And the people who can say that they don't have stress, maybe they don't. It's because they relate to stress very differently. You see, the problem is never the stressor in your life. The problem is never that person. It's the way you relate to that person who's stressing you out. It's never your job. It's the way you relate to your job. I hate my job. I hate my boss. I hate my partner. I hate my colleagues. You're always complaining. You're always blaming. It's the way you relate to something. An event. The event is not stressful. It's how you relate to it. So everything in life, if you're looking at changing your stress levels or learning to uh, perceive it better, it requires a lot of effort and mindfulness. It's not impossible. And one way to move from stress to de-stress is your breath. There are many, many different kinds of pranayamas and breath work. I'm going to teach you one today which works very, very easily. And it works for everyone I've done it with. Maybe it'll work for you. It'll work with practice. It will work with the right intention. I know people who say, oh, look, I did 60 breaths and nothing happened. Who are you expecting? Nothing's going to happen. Your problems are not going to go away after you do 60 breaths. But your cortisol and adrenaline, which are your stress hormones, will relax. And because they come back down, your estrogen, your progesterone, your tyroxine, your insulin, your testosterone, all of that will work better, including your blood sugar levels. So the whole point with stress, stress is not bad for us. Chronic stress, yes, it causes diseases. Today, if you go into medical records and, and all of the medical literature and scientific literature, every disease has a connection with chronic stress. Now, I'm not going to say that your chronic stress that you're going through right now is the number one, is the only cause of your disease. It's multifactorial. Let me explain. You're chronically stressed, so you can't sleep. Now, you've got sleep deprivation, which is also linked to every, every possible medical condition that you have. Now, you can't sleep, so you don't eat well the right day. How many people crave healthy food when they're sleep deprived? No one. Okay, so now you eat the wrong way. You either overeat, your hormones like leptin and ghrelin are all over the place. And now you feel miserable about yourself because you've eaten wrong. You have sugar crashes, you have spikes in your insulin levels and all of that stuff. So you end up feeling more miserable. Now, would you feel like working out? Absolutely not. You're not going to feel like working out because you're stressed, because you're sleep deprived, because you're eating wrong. You're functioning on the wrong energy sources, refined carbohydrates and sugars. So you're not going to have the energy or the will to want to work out. So now you don't work out and it's everything together that forms a vicious cycle that leads to your disease. Your genes, you may have a bad gene, but it's not necessary a bad gene becomes a disease unless it's turned on or a good gene is turned off. Epigenetics, environment controls how your genes upregulate and downregulate. So how do we move from stress to de-stress? We've spoken about alternate nostril breathing, which is Anilom Vilom. We speak about left nostril breathing to calm you down so that you can fall asleep deeper. We've spoken about right nostril breathing to energize yourself. Today, it's very simple. All you need to do is you can be in an office, you can be wherever you are, and you need to just sit with your back straight. You can sit on a chair, you can sit on a yoga mat in different positions. That's not important. Just keep your back straight. Okay, now someone who may be in a wheelchair and also bedridden can also do this. Exercise, lying flat down on your back or sitting in a wheelchair, not a problem. Just try to put a cushion behind you so you have your back straight, comfortable position. Now, all you're going to do is very simple. Listen, we're not going to do it now. You can practice it later. You inhale through your nostrils, both of your nostrils. A nice, slow inhale at your own pace. And you exhale through your mouth. So you, you don't blow out. You exhale gracefully, exhale through your mouth, okay? And now you do this for about six to eight counts, and I can guarantee you, there are a lot of things in life that cannot be guaranteed, and I don't like guaranteeing stuff because everyone's different, but I can guarantee you this. You do it six to eight times, you're not gonna wanna open your eyes. And it's best that you do this with your eyes closed. Thoughts come in, let them come. Your job is not to stop the thoughts, You're not. your job is not to judge them, nothing. You're just focusing on the breathing. So no matter how many thoughts come into your head, you just got to focus on the nice, long, slow inhale through both your nostrils. And as you inhale, you know, your belly comes up, your belly rises as you inhale. 
And as you exhale through your mouth, your belly deflates like a balloon. When you fill air into a balloon, it inflates. When you press the air out of the balloon, it deflates. That's your stomach. As you inhale, the stomach rises. As you exhale, the stomach comes down. So that's a combination of belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing all together. But the focus point of this exercise is inhale through the nostrils and exhale through the mouth. Now, once you've done this consciously for about six to eight reps, you may wanna go on for 10 reps. You may wanna stop at four reps if it's the first time, that's okay. Then you continue breathing, but now you close the mouth and you simply inhale through your nostrils and exhale through your nostrils. Now you would have noticed that your inhale is slightly getting longer without you pushing it, not a competition, not a game. And you'll find that your exhales have actually slowed down. So for example, if your inhale is gonna be four seconds, your exhale will probably be reaching double, like maybe eight seconds or nine seconds. Now you'll probably do six of these with your mouth closed, okay? You may not feel like opening your eyes and you wanna go on, you've got some time, you're feeling calm, you're feeling good, but now you're feeling a serious calm in your head. It's a beautiful feeling. Now observe what's gonna happen. While you're inhaling through your nostril and exhaling through your nostril, what's gonna happen is as you end your exhale, you're gonna find that you're not yet ready for the next inhale. There's gonna be a space that builds up at the end of your exhale and before the beginning of your next inhale. It's a beautiful space, okay? So don't force yourself to inhale. Let that exhale finish. There'll be a nice pause. Be with it until you're ready for the next inhale. You don't wanna push that space and then gasp the next inhale in. Very gracefully, you're gonna do three to four of that. So you can do six, six and six. You can do four, four and four, or you can just start off with inhale and exhale through your mouth. What's happening in this time? Your cortisol and adrenaline are coming down no matter what problems you have outside. And when you open your eyes, you're done. You may still be in that meeting room with all the problems happening or you may still be in that environment with all the problems happening, but you're recharged. Your cortisol adrenaline is low. You move from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest. Now let's say it's your meal time and you're stressed out. We all know that we shouldn't be eating our meals when we're stressed because you cannot digest and assimilate food efficiently when you're in the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight and flight. You gotta move to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest. The same thing with sleep. You can't sleep if you're in the sympathetic nervous system, impossible. You gotta move to the parasympathetic nervous system. And what I've taught you right now can move you to the parasympathetic nervous system, as simply as that. Now, you would say that, oh, Luke, I opened my eyes and my problems are there. Yes, your problems are there. This breathing isn't gonna take care of your problems, but it's gonna make you stronger and calmer to handle your problems. You see, most of our problems get worse in life because we react to it. We start giving away all of our power to the problem or the person or the event. And that's why it gets more and more stressful. Or now you'll be calmer to realize that, what am I trying to control? I can't control this. Let me let go of it, accept it. Find some other action plan that I can do. You can only think this when you're calm, when you're in the parasympathetic nervous system. You can't think this way when you're in the sympathetic nervous system. So you see, by doing this, it puts you in a space of calm, your hormones tend to rebalance, you come back to homeostasis. So remember one thing, whenever you slow down your breathing, you're sending a signal to your body that everything is okay. When your breathing is shallow because you're stressed, your body's out of homeostasis. It's keeping you in the sympathetic nervous system. So that's how it works. Whenever you slow down your breathing, you're sending a signal to your body that everything is okay. That message goes out, everything's okay, controlled by your breath. That's how powerful your breath is. That's how easy it is for, the, for you to use. But why don't most people use it? Take it for granted. Anything free is taken for granted. We don't use it. You have nature around you, people don't use it until they have to. Your sunshine around you, if you do, no one uses it, it's free. Ah, I'll start tomorrow, I'll start tomorrow. Anything free is always taken for granted. Remember that, there's no value in that. But you gotta start valuing the things which are important for you, starting with your breath. Without your breath, you can't live. So you put all your value into that breath, your breathing. You start moving into deeper and deeper and deeper breathing. And yes, it plays a massive role with diseases, cancers, anything. Look at a road accident victim. Before people, even, before the paradigmics even ask you what's wrong if you're conscious, the first thing that goes on you is an oxygen mask. Why? Maintain homeostasis. 
So you got to understand, start utilizing your breath. People say, oh, it's boring, it's boring. Okay, it's boring, don't do it. You're not using a tool which is so powerful and so intelligent, but you're looking for complication everywhere in a pill bottle, in a supplement, in a superfood, in a fat exercise program, failing to know that all the answers are within you. All the intelligence to solve most of your problems in life, whether it's health at a physical level, emotional, is within you. Start looking within, using the tools that you have to harness the intelligence in your body, and that's how you evolve. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember, you care is all about you.